Every year, more than 1 billion lipstick tubes are produced, equivalent to approximately 2.7 million lipsticks consumed each day. Yet few people realize that behind a single lipstick today lies a complex formula of more than 30 different ingredients, months of testing in laboratories, and an industrial production line operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, from blending and color formulation to molding, quality control, and final packaging. And now let's join the factory to discover how they are made. For thousands of years, lipstick has never been just a cosmetic. From around 2,000 years ago, when Cleopatra crushed insects to create a red pigment that projected power, through periods when lipstick was shunned by society as something taboo, and later revived by Elizabeth I as a symbol of royal authority, despite the risk of lead poisoning, lipstick has always been bound up in dramatic social conflict. Yet for centuries, it remained a hand-applied product, impractical and unhygienic. The real turning point did not arrive until the early 20th century, when the twist-up mechanism was introduced, eliminating direct hand application and opening the door for lipstick to become a global industrial product. Today, with annual revenues approaching $20 billion, the global lipstick market commands economic power comparable to that of a mid-sized nation. So how did humanity transform lipstick from a hazardous mixture into a precise, safe, and widely used industrial product around the world? Every lipstick, before entering mass production, begins its journey in the laboratory. Here, chemists and cosmetic scientists develop formulas, test color performance, and evaluate how the lipstick feels when applied to the lips. In a modern research and development center, there may be more than 20 chemists working exclusively on lipstick development alone. Their work goes far beyond creating new shades. They must ensure formula stability, color longevity, moisturizing performance, and a comfortable sensory feel during wear. A shade that appears simple on the surface can require hundreds of formula adjustments before it is perfected. In reality, laboratories create thousands of lipstick shades every year, but only a very small fraction meets all requirements and is selected to move forward into industrial scale production. At its core, lipstick is composed of three main groups of ingredients, waxes, color pigments, and conditioning emollients. Each group plays a distinct role in the final structure of the lipstick. Common waxes include carnauba wax, candelilla wax, and beeswax. These waxes allow the lipstick to maintain its solid form while determining how firm or soft the stick will be. Alongside them, plant-derived oils and gels are added to provide moisture, ensuring the lipstick glides smoothly across the lips without causing dryness or cracking. Color pigments are typically derived from iron oxide compounds, which make it possible to achieve stable shades that are safe for use on the skin. Notably, the exact blending ratios of these ingredients are usually considered trade secrets, closely guarded by each brand. After the ingredients are precisely weighed according to the formula, they are transferred into large industrial cooking vessels. Here, the wax is heated to approximately 194 degrees Fahrenheit to melt, while oils and gels are blended evenly into the mixture. In modern manufacturing facilities, these vessels are typically heated stainless steel mixing kettles, designed as closed systems to minimize contamination and heat loss. This is especially important for waxes and oils, which can degrade if exposed to excessive temperatures for even short periods of time. Inside the kettle, the mixture is stirred by a vertical shaft agitator, operating at a relatively low speed, usually ranging from 20 to 40 revolutions per minute. This speed is sufficient to circulate the entire batch without introducing air bubbles or damaging the structure of sensitive components. The blending process at this stage typically lasts from 30 to 60 minutes until the wax has fully melted and the mixture reaches a uniform, smooth and stable liquid state. Once the lipstick base has stabilized in both structure and viscosity, the process of color control can truly begin. Color pigments cannot simply be poured directly into the base mixture. The pigment particles must first be processed down to an extremely fine size, allowing the color to disperse evenly and preventing clumping when applied to the lips. 
To achieve this, the pigments are passed through a system of metal rollers. These rollers both compress and grind the pigments, flattening them into thin layers as they pass through. Typically, the pigments must go through the rolling system at least three times to ensure the color particles are fully refined. Once processed, the pigments are gradually added to the cooled base mixture. The operator continuously stirs the batch until the mixture becomes smooth and viscous, with a consistency similar to cream. At this stage, technicians conduct sensory testing and take small samples for comparison against reference standards, ensuring the mixture meets the required specifications before moving forward. To give lipstick not only color but also shine or a pearlescent effect, manufacturers use specialized particles commonly known as pearlescent pigments. These particles are typically made from mica, titanium dioxide, and iron oxides. When blended into the lipstick, they reflect light at multiple angles, creating glossy or metallic effects depending on the formulation. Differences in the type and particle size of these pearlescent materials are what make two lipsticks of the same red shade feel and appear completely different on the lips. While the lipstick mixture is still hot and has reached the appropriate viscosity, it is transferred to the filling station. Here, the liquid lipstick is fed into a specialized filling machine equipped with a continuous stirring mechanism, ensuring the mixture remains uniform throughout operation. Metal molds, preheated in advance, are positioned sequentially beneath the filling machine. An automated lifting system raises each mold into precise alignment with the dispensing nozzles. Once activated, the hot lipstick mixture is pumped evenly into each mold cavity, with every cavity corresponding to a single lipstick stick. This process must remain stable and uninterrupted. If the flow becomes uneven, the lipstick can solidify in layers, resulting in a non-uniform internal structure. Each mold is capable of producing dozens of lipsticks simultaneously, significantly increasing overall production efficiency. Immediately after being filled, the lipstick molds are transferred to the cooling system. Depending on the production line, the molds may be placed in a dedicated cooling area or carried on a conveyor through a closed cooling tunnel measuring approximately 5 feet in length. Within this environment, the molds are cooled under controlled conditions, typically at temperatures ranging from about 40 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature range allows the lipstick mixture to solidify gradually, preserving the shape of the mold while directly influencing the surface finish and internal structure of the lipstick. The cooling time is usually maintained between 15 and 30 minutes, depending on the wax formulation, mold size, and required surface finish. Throughout this process, chilled air is distributed evenly around the molds to ensure a uniform rate of temperature reduction from the outside inward. Before filling begins, empty lipstick cases are automatically picked up by robotic grippers, lifted one by one, rotated and aligned in the same orientation before being placed onto the conveyor and fed into an automated inspection module. At this stage, a laser coating system engraves batch numbers, production shift codes, or traceability markings directly onto the body or base of each case. Laser technology enables non-contact marking without ink, ensuring that neither the appearance nor the material durability of the case is compromised. Next, a vision inspection system uses industrial cameras to detect geometric defects such as cracked casings, misaligned threads, incorrect plastic coloration, or microscopic deformations. Only lipstick cases that fully meet quality standards are allowed to proceed further along the production line. Any defective cases are immediately rejected by an automated eject system. Once the lipstick has fully solidified and the cases have passed inspection, the molds are transferred to the demolding station. Instead of being removed by hand, the factory uses a pneumatic system to gently push each lipstick out of the mold, minimizing the risk of surface scratches or deformation. A specialized holder is positioned over the mold, containing lipstick cases that have already been pre-assembled and precisely aligned with each individual stick. The mold assembly and holder are then fed into a reversing machine. Here, controlled bursts of compressed air, combined with small mechanical push rods, apply pressure from the base of the mold, guiding each lipstick directly into its twist-up tube. 
This process is fast and highly precise, allowing the lipstick to be transferred into its case without scratching or color smearing. The twist-up mechanism was first introduced in 1923, and it remains in use today in nearly its original form thanks to its simple, durable, and highly efficient design. On the next conveyor, the lipsticks pass through a system of thermal air guns. Precisely controlled streams of hot air gently melt the outermost surface layer of each stick. This process smooths and polishes the surface while concealing microscopic scratches formed during earlier stages of production. After leaving the heating zone, the lipsticks continue through a set of mechanical rollers. These rollers rotate the tube, causing the lipstick to slowly retract into its correct position within the twist-up mechanism. Although this is considered a final finishing stage, the level of precision achieved here directly influences the tactile experience when a user opens and uses the lipstick for the very first time. Not every lipstick is allowed to leave the factory. During the quality control stage, samples are randomly taken from each production batch to evaluate stability and overall consistency. One of the most critical tests is the melting point assessment. Technicians scrape a small amount of lipstick and apply it onto a glass plate. The sample is then placed on a temperature-controlled heating element. As the temperature gradually rises, the technician uses a magnifying lens to closely observe the moment the lipstick begins to soften and melt, while a thermometer precisely records the temperature at which this occurs. The melting point must fall within an approved range to ensure the lipstick will not soften or melt inside a handbag on a hot day. In addition, the color and texture are compared against reference standards. Only when all parameters remain within acceptable limits is the batch approved for release, once the lipstick batches have passed quality control, they are transferred to the automated capping station. Here, lipstick caps are fed into rotary tables or vibrating conveyors, where they are oriented and aligned in the correct position before assembly. The lipstick bodies move continuously along the conveyor toward the capping machine. When sensors confirm precise alignment, a pneumatic piston system presses each cap onto the tube with carefully controlled force, ensuring a secure, uniform, and airtight fit. This stage is fully automated to maintain high throughput and consistent quality across all units. On some production lines, immediately after capping, the lipsticks undergo a final visual inspection. Products showing surface scratches or minor misalignments are removed, and authenticity seals or brand labels are applied to reinforce product integrity and consumer trust. For liquid lipsticks, once the formula reaches the required viscosity and stability, it is filled directly into approved containers without passing through molding or cooling stages. At the filling station, a servo-driven metering pump dispenses the liquid lipstick into each container with precisely controlled volume, ensuring uniform fill levels and preventing air bubbles. Filling speed and pump pressure are continuously adjusted to match the viscosity of each specific formulation. Immediately after filling, the containers move straight to the automated capping line. Robotic grippers pick up each threaded cap, align it precisely along the axis, and screw it onto the tube using a servo-controlled mechanism that tightly regulates torque. This ensures a secure, leak-proof seal while keeping the applicator tip and bottleneck stable throughout the product's lifespan. After capping and final visual inspection, the lipsticks are transferred to the final packaging area. First, each lipstick is placed into its individual package according to the design of each brand. This primary packaging layer both protects the product and serves as the brand's visual identity on retail shelves. Next, the individually packaged lipsticks are arranged in predetermined quantities and placed into larger paper cartons. These cartons are labeled with complete production, batch information, traceability codes, and destination markets. The cartons are then packed into shipping cases and wrapped with protective film to secure them during transportation. In the final step, the shipping cases are stacked onto pallets, ready for warehousing and dispatch. From here, lipsticks quickly leave the factory and are distributed to retail locations around the world, 
often appearing on store shelves within 24 hours of production. A small lipstick is not merely a product of aesthetics. It is the result of material science, precise chemistry, and an industrial production system operating with near zero tolerance for error. Its true value does not lie in its size or color, but in its absolute stability. This is also how modern industry works, transforming the most familiar objects into outcomes shaped by hundreds of invisible technical decisions behind the scenes. When you use something that seems simple, chances are you are touching an entire chain of technology that rarely receives attention. What materials or manufacturing processes would you like the factor into decode next? Leave a comment. Your idea might just become the next video.